Good afternoon, guys. I'm going to let everybody click on here and let both you guys kind of get ready for tonight. Got a really good show kind of planned out. It's going to be kind of, dedicated kind of really out. on fishing reports. I know we get them every week. Uh -huh. Man, they're so important for everybody to list and talk about. And we're going to talk about how everybody's catching them. You know, last week, actually after the show, uh, we had a lot of tornadoes and storms roll through the uh, an area here I was at, and actually a lot of damage. But thankfully, uh, we didn't have any damage in my house, and mm -hmm. we kind of escaped those storms. But it's kind of a part of April, seems like to me, man. You get these storms just about every other day, seems like, roll through areas. And all three of us guide full time, so we're kind of used to this uh, changing <laughs> conditions and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, so it's been challenging, but also been very successful. I, I know I even talked to Jerry before we, the show tonight, and he did a little bit of something different on his today's bite. But, you know, it's all about fish reports tonight. So if you got them, after you hit that 25K crappie connection, we would love to see them. We'd love to talk about them tonight. So throw them out there, and uh, we will talk it. But as you guys know, as always, Turn the notifications on, but also comment 25K Crappie Connection. It gets the show started in a real good fashion. But, Jerry, thanks for coming back on the Crappie Connection, and especially today's bike tonight. Man, appreciate you having me. I always enjoy it. Uh, like, I, every time I say this, every time I get on is I get customers and people everywhere I go, they're always like, man, I seen you on a Crappie Connection. I seen you on Crappie yeah, yeah. Connection. So it's hey, really cool to be part of it. Speaking of, uh, Richard Crawford, he just hopped on here and said hey to you. Oh, yeah. So, hey, Richard's on the boat last week. I think he yep. sent you a picture. He caught up. Yeah, he did. He, he rubbed it in a little He rubbed it in a little bit. Uh, yeah, you got to quit taking my guys from over here. That was kind of heartbreaking. <laughs> my man went over there and fished with you. <laughs> I met him at the prior show, and uh, he's talking about going. He was he hauling around. His wife said, if you want to go, just go, you uh -huh. know? And uh, we had a blast, him and his uh, – I think it was his uh, nephew was with him and gotcha. from Missouri. We had a good time. Yeah, I was glad. He he caught about a 250-something. Caught a good fish. Oh, man. He said, yeah, I got to send this to Dustin. <laughs> yep, I got the picture. He said he was with you out there. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome, man. It, it's such a joy, really, taking all these different people fishing. And I was trying to think of earlier, I took a guy fishing, uh, I think, a month ago that's been out with you, Jerry. And I, I know we all kind of run in it together. He's going yeah. with this guy and this guy. And, and yeah. it's kind of a, a neat experience when you can say, yeah, they know Jerry or they know Dustin. And yeah. it's yeah. kind of a common ground that you always get to, you know, get somebody in the boat and guide them. You but, know, yeah. I've learned Lake Fork is a big destination for a lot of crappie fishermen mm -hmm. because I've taken a lot of people out and they've been on guided trips at Lake Fork. And I'm like, who'd you go with? And I'm yeah. waiting for him to say Jerry or, you know, Jordan maybe. But yeah. there's a lot of guides I've never even heard of at Lake Fork, man. There's just there's a, lot of be guys a, time. That, a lot of guys I don't know, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I see names popping up all the time. I'm like, man, who's this guy? But, yeah, there's yeah. people ask me, how many guides are on Fork? I said, well, it depends on the day or the week, you know. Yeah, and, exactly. What I, time of year? Yeah, there's a bunch of them, you know. There's, there's yeah. probably, uh, you know, five or six full-time guides what i consider real full-time guides and then you, gotcha. got some, you even got bass guys in the winter time they they were they switch over and run crappie trips because the bass gotcha. is slow. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of guys I hear you. yeah i've heard I, a few of them been bad experiences i give them your number and tell them we're gonna <laughs> fix that we're gonna fix that next time <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah definitely uh you know and we'll let jerry he's a guest this week but jerry go ahead and Let's hear your today's bike fishing report. And oh, I'm so excited. We were we were talking about this just before we got on here, and I'm pumped to hear it. Well, I'm going to be brutally honest with you. Since I think we was talking about uh, Crawford, he was probably the last really, really good trip I had, and that's been two weeks ago. It's been wow. a grind for me. I, I got to admit, now, we battled a lot of wind. Um, which that always limits you on where you can fish, you know. Yep. Uh, oh, yeah. But the fish have just – we've been in between, I felt like. There's been a lot of fish shallow, I know, and it's just like I started seeing less and less fish. And then wherever I caught them today, I can't catch them tomorrow. And so every morning oh, I start off like, you know, naturally as a guide, you say, hey, you know, we caught them pretty good here yesterday. I'm going to start yeah. here. Right. Then you go in there and nothing goes down. 
So then you're scrambling like, well, well, let me run over here. Let me, I can fish this. I can't fish that. And you just start scrambling. And some days, the whole day's a scramble. You know, yesterday, mm-hmm. for example, um, the day before, uh, after four or five moves, I finally got on a pretty good bite. And uh, there was a lot of fish in the general in, a, in one area. And it was, you know, 10, 12 foot of water on the edge of a boat lane. I said, hey, these fish are going to be here uh, tomorrow. So I went back, started there yesterday morning, right off the bat. I hate it when you drop the trolling motor and you first, you just turn it and there's a good fish. Oh, yeah. And because uh, you know that's going to be the that's only the fish only you see. one. Yep. <laughs> and that's kind of how it started. And we literally fished probably a mile and I had like 11. And wow. by then, you know, it's getting up 11 o'clock, you know, and I got mm-hmm. like 11 fish in the box and <laughs> we're just, we can catch them if we see them. We're just not seeing anything. So, yeah. I told them, I said, just set it right there. Thank you. Oh, my UPS guy's delivering a rod from Ken. <laughs> Tim, thanks for the service. Uh, yeah, thanks for that service. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, no rush. Thank you. All right. Now, what rod is it? Uh. This is some tips for a, oh, yep. a new rod. I got you. Yep, that's I not know. out yet. So we're yep. working on a rod. Yep. But uh, anyway, so I, I decided, you know, <laughs> I, I'm going to make a move. I went way deep and went way out in some deep water that I haven't fished. And there was a lot of fish. So we kind of salvaged the trip. But uh, <laughs> it's been a... But were, Jordan, those post-pon, were those post-pawn fish or still? You know, I was in 30-foot water catching fish. A lot of them were spawning on the top of stumps, eight, mm-hmm. ten foot deep, but uh, no big fish. But Jordan messaged me just afternoon. He said, "Hey, I found them," and he literally he was in an area that I could see from where I fished yesterday morning, and he whacked them. So mm-hmm. I mean, it was like I, I was I just barely missed them that close. And, yeah. and um, today it was supposed to rain pretty good winds of the guy that was going to fish with me we talked last night and we decided we'd postpone so i got up this morning and uh it wasn't raining you know naturally and the mm. wind wasn't blowing oh, like yeah. they said it was going to do every time so uh shad spawn started i seen shad spawning yesterday so i actually i said i'm going to run out and i'm going to try to catch some bass early and i'm i got there too late so i ran up to an area and i seen jordan fishing i said you know what i'm going to go fish shallow I, there's got to be fish shallow. We're not seeing enough fish. That tells me that these fish are way shallower than what we're we're fishing. And uh, Fork is full with a lot of weeds and a lot of – there's so much cover shallow. And I think what's happening at Fork is there's so much of that. And the creeks are full. These fish have went way up and are way shallower than what we're fishing, and you can't see them. I'm talking there's so many weeds and so much grass and all that. I just think they're so scattered in that stuff that, uh, you know, you can catch some some pre-spawn fish, but once them fish move and they're moving quick, uh, you lose them. And you just, they're not out where we're live scoping, you know, in that 8, 10, 12 foot yeah. water. So I got up and and uh, just turned the graphs off and started working down a protected bank and fishing like I, my favorite way to catch a crappie is oh, about yeah. two foot of line out and drop it in weeds and, you know, them males just thump it, you know. Oh, yeah. And I, I actually caught 20 doing that, and uh, I didn't wear them out. I threw them all back. I kind of spot checking some places and because uh, I've got a trip tomorrow, and I'm hoping you, that we can. You're going to bank them tomorrow? I'm, gonna, I'm going to bank oh, yeah. them tomorrow. I'm going <laughs> to try it now. If it's going like my last banking trips where I catch a few in a spot and I go back and we fish an hour and we yeah. don't have any, then I start uh-huh. panicking and going, well, I can do better than this live scope. Yeah, you know? yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, that was a blast. I love catching them little oh. black males yeah. in that shallow water. So and then I went, and, I went and checked another spot that uh, a couple weeks ago I was really catching a lot of fish. It's a, a flat side of a creek that um, – and I'm way up on the north in the lake and there was eight nine foot water a lot of fish two weeks ago and then they disappeared i fished it like i ran through there three times and catch one fish pulled in there today and every stump had multiple fish on them so i let them fish i'm hoping them fish are there tomorrow you know the way it's been lately they won't be 
the, you know, yeah. the, I'll have to go somewhere else. But yeah, for and I talked to Jordan. I seen Jordan. I know where he fished. He caught two double limits today and some big fish. So I think we've had a new wave of fish come in, and uh, it's picking up. I feel like you know I, I'm ready for the spawn to be over because it's oh, just no. uh, it, if, oh, if you've got it very long, you look forward you to it. You look forward to it, but then between the wind and the storms and the you know the unstable weather and the fishing moving every day, it gets about middle of April. I just want to <laughs> skip the next three weeks and go right to the post spawn. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, but uh, it's. Uh, you know, we're catching, still catching. I had a couple 250s last week. Uh, had a 240-something yesterday. So, still catching some good fish. Oh, yeah. You know, but it's uh, it's been typical April springtime, springtime weather for me. You know, for not sure. consistent. Dustin, what how's your today's bite? Well, listen, somebody asked, Brad, how the res is. You better jump in on this with an okay. go. <laughs> you know, um, I'm going to kind of kick back from last week. Kind of like Jerry was saying a minute ago, we had a lot of storms last week. I had to actually reschedule some trips just just because the weather was just too too bad. And I had a lot of messages and and uh, text and everything else. People asking about the weather last week because I I had to get off the live because the the sirens are going off. Yeah. But uh, we were really blessed and have any damage at my house. And uh, but getting back to fishing i went to kentucky lake for cornfield fishing gear demo days and that was last thursday and friday and saturday so i went up to kentucky lake i never did fish but got to hang out with a lot of cool guys up there a lot of met a few of you guys actually up there that come out and spoke to me and uh shot some more podcasts it's gonna be a real good podcast up there as well did a, even a, another podcast with a biologist from kentucky lake and talked about even the aging cart factor and some new things about going on in Kentucky Lake. So had a great time up Kentucky Lake. That was the first time I ever seen the lake. The water, the water looked beautiful. The lakes got some beautiful fish in there because we actually tagged some of the fish for crop here forever. They're starting a new program up there in Kentucky Lake. So helped those guys without, did a tour through cornfield fishing gear, how it's made kind of deal. Just had a really fun time at Kentucky. Come back, got back on the reservoir yesterday and hadn't been on the water on that lake in probably about seven days. And like like we all know, seven days in the fish world, especially in the springtime, you might as well have been talking about last year, everything that I knew yeah. about Linda for the most part. Exactly. <clears throat> so, you know, we talked about last week, I kind of planned my day and Jerry hit on it as well about wind direction where can i fish that's the first thing you got to really check out in the springtime is where is mother nature going to allow you to fish today so that's kind of where i started yesterday is all right this area here we're going to have a high wind but i can actually fish this section of the lake when in there first fish i seen was and believe it or not my scale battery was dead so i don't even know what the fish uh, <laughs> but it was kicking three pounds i'll post a picture of it later first fish we seen just about a three pounder and it's sitting about uh, I'm gonna say seven, eight foot deep in about 15 foot of water right next to a ledge. So it, it told me automatically that these fish are pulled up staging and waiting to spawn. And I'm sure some of them are actually spawning. <coughs> the color that was actually just dynamic for me is the, uh, it's the Bobby Garland speckled. What was that speckled pearl? Is that correct there? Dustin? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the live roamer. It's that little flat shaped bait. And I tell you what, these fish, as they're sitting there uh, just suspended, if you could drop this bait and let that ta this tail kind of flop in front of them, they can't stand it. No, they, they can't. can't. They'll sit back and you'll see them kind of do that hovering motion that, and all of a sudden attack in its own. Yeah, when it's sitting flat like that, it kind of flutters down to them, too. Yeah. When they see that, it gives it to them. They see that thing kind of flap in yeah. front of them. I don't know. It just oh, yeah. ignites their anger issues they have. So <laughs> she attacked it. We winded up with a limit of fish on the lake. and um, But today, I had to kind of stand back and say, all right, I got a whole new wind direction tomorrow. And it's uh, on Barnett, a, a south, southeast is not a good direction for me. Especially, we had a lot of rain, like I was saying earlier, on this lake. 
So I knew I couldn't go up river because I knew it was going to be a lot of current. It was going to blow out everything I knew up there. So I had to punt, go back and actually fish Eagle Lake, which is about an hour and 20 minutes from my house. So I did a guide trip over there, get over there and the lake rose. I'm going to say about two foot since last I've been there. So the lake yeah. jumped up, a lot of fresh water in it. Had to really find them, you know. Once we started catching them, I noticed these fish are completely spawned out. I mean, they're thin. The spawn's in their history. I mean, it's over with. Um, at least what I've seen. I didn't never even catch any fish shallow. And I went into some 8 to 10 foot of water. Really didn't see what I was looking for. Moved back out. Really concentrated what I would consider a post-spawn bite. And those fish staged up or suspended in schools. 15 to 25 foot of water is really where I targeted today. And uh, I threw up the old long lines and, you know, everybody knows this color if they've watched the Today's Bite show in the last six months. And that's that blue chrome in the Bobby Garland stroller. You love the, it. The blue chrome. And, man, them suckers ate it up to do. So we had a real good day long lining yesterday and a good day on the reservoir yesterday. But the biggest challenge, of course, is just keeping up with this wind and these fronts. Staying on them. Through. Yeah. Staying I feel on like them. they – they move with the fronts. I feel like the fish definitely do. I'll jump into Grand Lake, man. I've been so proud of this lake. Been showing it off like crazy. If you guys seen on my uh, guide page, uh, GFB Outdoors, we are smashing the crappie, and it's it's definitely the best I've ever seen a fish. But I'm fishing a whole total different pattern than I was last year because where I was at last year had a lot clearer water this year. We didn't get the spring rains that we normally do. And I need murky water for the area I fished last year and really did good. So I kind of had to think outside the box and move up towards the murkier water and uh, just have found really good pods of spots that are holding Roman fish, staging crappie, waiting to go spawn. It seems like the warmer it gets, the more aggressive they're getting. They're getting shallower and we're just kind of following them up. So mm -hmm. it's been a blast. I mean, we have been wrecking them and been catching good quality fish. It's all about the wind, though. I've got about five spots in a, for a south-southwest wind, a south-southeast wind, mm -hmm. and it's like wherever the wind's blowing, a southwest wind right now, you're guaranteed to smash them. But if it's a north-northeast, it's going to take us longer, but I, we got them. So <laughs> it's, just, it's all about the wind right now. And then the, the aggressiveness of fish. And like Jerry said, catch them on the bank. I went uh, after a trip, shoot it, I think it was Friday. Uh, yeah, Friday evening. And we went bank fishing. I, my wife come down and a good buddy. And we ran around slip corking some spots on the bank. Caught 15 or 20 good males. So I figure tomorrow I'm going to start trying to fish the bank a little bit. Uh, I also, also had to cancel a trip today because of the weather. We rescheduled it. So. I can't wait to grab the corks tomorrow and line them up and see what we can do. Fly around. Jerry, I'm like you, though. When it If it starts getting slow, I'm like, ah, let's pull out and start sniping them. Because it starts making me sick. I'm like, ah, I think we could catch them faster and better. You start playing games with the grid. Because the bank fishing, you feel cuffed. Like, you feel yeah. – you can't see anything. You're just blind, and you just don't – you're like, man, I know they're there. Are they, are they not wanting what you're biting? You know, changing the jigs. It's all that stuff just going through your head. So – uh, hopefully they're on good enough. You know, I'm, I'm thankful, Jerry, we, we don't have, we don't have all that grass and, and cover like you do. And I see the picture today you posted with all that moss and stuff on there. There, there's no chance I'd, that'd stress me plumb out, but, uh, man, we have a lot more wide open area to fish. So it's, mm -hmm. it, it helps. And if they're going to go hide, they're usually going under docks and stuff like that, where you can find yeah. them. There is no. a... Go ahead, Brad. I'm sorry. I, no, no problem. I see a couple of fish reports that we want to post up there before we get too far ahead of these guys. But Hummer, he's got a Grenada Lake report, and I thought this was very interesting. And a lot of guys from Grenada was at the uh, Kentucky Lake with me last week. But that lake has jumped 10 foot since last week. Whoa, holy smokes. Yeah. <laughs> so, man, that's a tough scenario to keep up. Of, of, I of guarantee you. Yeah, Tenth of water on the lake is a, especially Grenada Lake, man. I don't know how many acres that would equivalent, but you know, was, they got that rain, it seems like just about a week or two late. They well, they need you know, that maybe, maybe not. Mother Nature's yeah. gonna let us know that in the future, but yeah, uh, he said fishes have been in one to five foot of water, mouths of major creeks. He's been catching them on a 32nd and 16th black chartreuse, monkey milk, and Bobby Garland Mayfly mayfly color man all right speaking of mayfly i'm doing these two baits i i went 
you can see I went and cut these bad boys off the line just for you guys right before this. But this is a <laughs> Cajun cricket mayfly. This is what I'm throwing on the bank uh, right now in that dirtier stuff, and it will kill those males up shallow. Mm -hmm. So tossing that on a slip cork, that's a 16th crappie pro jig head orange. And then this is my very favorite, especially on a cloudy day, but any time with a slip cork, Grand Lake, this is going to murder them. And, I mean, I'm telling you, I'm so excited to go tomorrow, I can't even see straight. But this is a – Black and chartreuse silver slab slayer with a chartreuse uh, head on it. And, guys, that's a murderer. I don't know what it is about that bait, but it's almost unfair. It's like turning a live scope on is what this is right here now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I like about that first one? You said the Cajun cricket. That was my yeah. top three setup for the month of April. That was one of them that you used. That's oh, unfair. really? All right, yeah. all right. That's the exact combination that you're talking about. Good, one of the seven man. Sunset I'm telling you, it's a bad boy. I, I love Cajun cricket, and, and it's caught a lot of big fish for me, but that's a good – the mayfly is a good one to start using now when they're on the banks. It's more of a – I feel like when they're up shallower, they're more into the buggy type stuff. When they're sitting on all the structure, all these lay-down trees, the stuff falling off the trees, I'm cleaning stuff with them different than shad inside them. So I'm excited to throw the mayfly. Also, guys, uh, we've got about 81 thumbs up right now. So if you're on Facebook or YouTube, both you guys can do it for us and gals. Hit that thumbs up for me. See if we knock it over 100 real quick. I know you guys can do it. You do it every week for me. But I got a question to coming in. It's from YouTube, James. And he's asking, when you're fishing shallows, and Jerry's the perfect guy to answer this question. He did it today. But when you're fishing shallows with two foot of line off the rod tip, what's the best way best way to feed more line out to bring them to the boat back reel open the bail or spool the line out how did how's the best way in your mind to actually get that fish in <laughs> when you've got that explain line. that ex explain that jerry without having a rod in your hand <laughs> yeah uh, there's there's several ways you can do it like today i just had the rod i was using 11 half foot my striker rod and oh, yeah. uh, catch them about a foot to two foot deep so i don't I'm going to peel out about four foot of line exactly. and I've got a good half of that in my hand right here. And I'll pull that jig up to the tip where I can stick it right where I want it, especially if there's wind or if there's some overhanging stuff. And I'll just let that line down till it goes slack, pick it up and hold it still. And I've got a lot of line in my hand. So when I do stick a fish, I'll lift him and let that line and give me enough line out to swing him to me or just swing him in the boat. You know, like exactly. I was only born in the boat today, so I'm just slinging them, flopping them in the floor of the boat. <laughs> but you don't want to just have two foot of line. Now, you can have a uh, – you can back your drag off or whatever you want to do to where when you stick a fish, you could feed some line out as you're lifting him. But I like to have that line in my hand because that's, that's what I'm holding. I'm holding my rod yeah. tip right off the water, and I'm lifting him and then letting that line out to give me more length. You know, yeah. it's um, – mm -hmm. I was going to back up something you mentioned about the, the all the weeds and stuff would drive you crazy. I, and this might help some people. So, like, you're right. There's a lot of weeds and grass and stuff like yeah. that. So, what I do, and I back before LiveScope, when I was guiding on Levon, I'd fish 45 days straight and never fish over two foot deep. You know, that's how I made wow. my living in the spring. That's fun, but fun. There's a pattern in there somewhere. So what you do, like today, I figured it out. It took me a little while. You've got, I had a the bank with some grass and some weeds, and then there was a cut between it, and there'd be another weed line out from it. And I figured out those fish were between the two closer to the inside edge. I fished a lot of it before I figured. I catch a fish, gotcha. one or two. Mm -hmm. But after you catch two or three, you make a mental note. How deep were they? Where were they at? Were they mm -hmm. on the inside or outside, or were they away from the stuff? Or what kind of what kind of weed was it? These are I don't even know the name. But I call them water weeds. They're kind of green. They're black early, and then as this time of year they start greening up. Gotcha. They were in those water weeds, not in that other, not in the grass, not in that other stuff. So gotcha. when I start going down that bank, I start picking out like that clump ought to have fish. And before long, you can almost call your shot. You can say. There's going to be fish right oh, here. Yeah. You might catch four or five out of one little spot. You might fish another 50 yards, and you don't catch anything. Then you come to the same type of little group of weeds, and you catch four or five. Well, after you do that a couple of times, don't waste your time on all that other stuff. Then you start looking for specific things. 
Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's just like when we live scoping. Are they on boat art trees? Are they on stumps? Are they roaming or what? You know, you start, Eliminate. you can almost pick your shot after a while, after you do oh, it. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. You know, it's, it's funny you say that. What brings to me to mind is one of my favorite trips I've had, and it was we maybe caught 15 fish in five hours, but I had some guys out on Millwood Lake, and it was super windy, and we had to just go where they were supposed to be spawning. It was about this time of year. And we were using 11 and a half uh, foot rods. We were pulling the jig to the tip and going in buck brush. Yeah, and yeah. if you if you couldn't make that bad boy almost to the base of that tree, you, you weren't, weren't going to get them. And, and yeah. I mean, you had to, when you hooked them, you had to drag them all the way out of it. And that's that's exactly how I did it, Jerry, too, is to leave that slack in my hand. I always get nervous pulling the drag out because you're giving that fish slack a little slack. bit. Yeah. And, and it yep. just it wears me out. Like even in Grenada, when I was running some trips last year, um, you know, they a lot of them guides will have them dragging the line out, and it kills me. I tell them just spin around and set it in the back of the boat more than I'd rather. <coughs> zip, zip, zip. But they don't yeah. lose a lot of fish doing it. They they have a lot bigger shanks than I used to. But yeah, that yeah. that dragging sometimes it just if you give any of them slack at all, them fish are so good. Them crappie are so good at spitting the hook. I've ran into that a lot with sniping fish here. Even when you yank with the longer rod, if you don't set it and keep pressure, like a lot of people aren't used to the longer rod, so when you set it, it bounces. And yep. if it goes boom, that fish is coming off 80% of the time. So you yep. always want to keep the, keep that pressure on them or you're going to lose so many. I got a question. Uh, Floyd's asking from YouTube. He's asking, will a warm front affect crappie like a cold front would? You know, for me, I don't like any kind of major temperature change. I want everything to be gradual. So I don't know about a warm front, and it depends on how fast it's warming up. I don't like it jumping up real fast, just like I don't like it dropping real fast either. So yeah. Yeah. I say it could, definitely could affect them just as much as a cold front. I think it has to, some do maybe with the time of year, the water temps going yeah. into that warm front, you know, mm -hmm. that could really kick the, like the run them fish shallow, um, warm that water up in the afternoon and run them shallow, you could, you know, sure. and it could go ahead and cause it, that spawn to, really bust off and yeah you know, I'm, I'm 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 looking for 90 degree warm front push them out to about <laughs> yeah. 18 foot of water you mm -hmm. know so I, i'll say uh, every single time i've i've noticed a really cold front hurts them a lot more than a really warm front in my yep. opinion i've never had a warm front really negatively affect the bite as much as i have a cold front like nope. it's like it's like us kind of cold front we just zaps us we don't want to do nothing we don't want to go outside <laughs> But when it's warmer, I feel like they get a lot more aggressive and you start. I like everything up. gradual. Give me a yeah. gradual. Yeah. Yeah. Just slowly bump it up or slowly bring it down. Yeah. I got another uh, Alabama Lake report from Hummer. And thank you every week, man. He's coming on here every week giving us great fish reports. So don't hold them back, guys. If you got a fish report, he might just tell us it's not on good. It's not a good bite there. Help these other people that's in your area by giving these reports. And like I said, man, save them some time. <laughs> you know, save them some time. It's like, man, that lake is just not good right now. It jumped up 15 foot. And the fish aren't there. Go somewhere else. But be honest. You know, we want honest fish reports, too. When I say <laughs> hey, yeah, um, Richard got on here and said, he said, uh, don't tell Jerry you don't like a certain bait or he'll make a believer out of you and make you use it the whole day. <laughs> hey, yeah. I already know which bait that is. And and it's because these Grand Lake crappie just don't like them dang baits as well. Yeah, well, he got on the boat and said, it doesn't work. I don't like it. And I said, that's all you get to use today. So Yeah, good. I, Taught him a lesson. Every, for, for two days, every fish he caught, that's what he caught him on. That's I wouldn't let him use anything else. That's, that's what I do with my men of fishermen. They get on the boat and they're like, I'm strictly yeah. men of guy. Don't use jigs. I'll dump men as out. I'll, if I have them, I'll say that. Well, oh, we're man, not, that you, you're, you're strictly <laughs> using jigs now. You're you're going to be a jig fisherman for this. So that that's one reason I feel, you know, they, they go with a guide, learn a technique that you don't know about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, why would you go with a guide and fish a men of the same way you do all the time? Well, go with a guide and fish a jig, you know. I, yeah. You know, Kale gives me a hard time because I'm so anti using men as I just. I hate using menace. I, Man, I, I will, but I hate yeah. using them. And he's mm -hmm. like, you know, you could end your trip two hours earlier some days if you had used a minute. And I'm like, you're probably right, but I want these people to catch them on jigs and learn something and learn a, learn the jig technique. 
so they yeah. can go back, you know, and use it. I'm just hard headed and stubborn yeah. that way. If you say, tell me they're not biting minnows, I'm definitely not going to, you know, not biting <laughs> jigs. I'm definitely only using jigs. Yeah, mm-hmm. you are hard headed, buddy, because I can't say the same. If I if it's got to be a minnows, I'm going to use them in if I have to. Yeah. <laughs> not me. Well, I know, Brad. Hey, I'll tell them too. You don't want to use a minnow. I know the guy to call. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't. I, if I've got minnows in my boat, I'm expecting a really tough bite. So yeah, that's yeah. A good giveaway. If you you come on a trip with me yeah. and I've got my minnow, turn around. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be a tough day. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have no doubt in my mind that it's gonna be a tough day. But like I said, big night on fish reports. Post them up, guys. Let's hear them. And I got a few oh. questions. I don't want to forget anybody as well. I got Holder Port, and he's uh, like I said, Hummer's catching from in Tuscaloosa and Holt, crappie in twenty foot of water using a one eighth black chartreuse Cajun cricket near the bottom morning bite five to ten foot of water one sixteenth monkey milk also one eighth chatterbaits man that's interesting. Hmm. All right, I got a good fishing report. Jordan Sanders, Lake Fork fishing report. He said. Follow the champ. He has a black and red falcon with red raptors. He said, He said, keep an eye on him. If he's in 14, for, uh, 14 foot, I suggest fishing in 14 foot. If he's in two foot of water, fish two foot of water. The best thing you can do is follow Jerry. I live and die by that pattern. <laughs> hey, tell Jordan I seen where he was today. I'll see him in the morning. <laughs> see him in the morning. Yeah, Scott Malone, he says he's catching. He caught two limits on the bank in Elk River Sunday afternoon. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's my Grand, the Grand Lake buddy there. Uh, Scott, nice to hear that you're catching him here. Look, it sounds like he's got him on the bank. What did he say? Sunday evening? It should only be better from right now than from Sunday. We've had great three days of really hot weather. We got Donnie cool. Paris. He's real foot. He's in pretty tough conditions. He's using a 14-foot being in Black Diamond, Cajun Cricket, was the ticket for open water using live scope? Didn't catch many, but the ones they did, he did catch for a pound and a half and better. Oh man, that sounds like a good outing to me. Hey, Cajun cricket is the ticket. I like it that. Is this week, <laughs> <laughs> the cricket is the ticket. I got James. James, I did see your question a little while ago, and I went and got him. I don't know if you see me when I got up. He's asking about the planter boards, and uh, like I said, as this post phone kind of comes in effect on, especially these oxbow lakes. I'm going to do a, a YouTube actually about pulling planter boards, but I've got two different sizes here from Church Tackle, and one's a mini planter board. I don't pull them a whole lot, but when I'm going to pull the planter board, it is going to be this little small size, and this is a, a TX-12 by Church Tackle. You can look them up. Both of those right, planter boards would be great for you. Real quick, you got to run me by how that thing works. I've never seen one work before. <laughs> you know, it's it's really simple. You loop your line around this right here, and you'll set have save your long line and jigs, for example. I'm gonna yeah. cast them out, loop it around this little cushion right here. Okay. Loop your line around it, set it down, and they will feed away from the boat. So you can set it from 10 foot all the way to 40, 50, 60, 100 foot away from the boat. What? So essentially, you can make a 200 foot path going through the, the water column that you're trolling. Okay. How, how do you know you get a fish on there? It's pretty simple. I mean, as this is getting pulled through the water, you get a bite, it's going to pull back and you're going to see your rod tip like you would any oh, other. Okay. Day. Got you. I thought there was maybe something flips up or something. Well, you can put flags on these bigger boards like these. <laughs> And they'll actually pop up a flag. And That's Jerry, crazy. I don't know if you fished years ago when Tommy Scarless won Grenada Lake yep. National Championship. That's how he won them was off planter boards. Oh yeah! Wow. That's you, you, speak, you see a lot of guys running them. Ran them years ago. Some uh, I my long line jigging been to a minimum compared to you. But we used to do it a lot on Le Bon. This early in the spring when they're getting them out of these coves. And the fish seemed to be real spooky. And, you know, yep. if you were pushing rods, it didn't seem to be pushing baits. You'd do as good. So we'd do that and long line them. And I think you'd get your baits far enough, those fish would maybe settle back down and yep. you could get them, get them over them and catch them. We used to, man, I used to kill them this time. It was, my customers loved it because they'd sit in the back of the boat and just 
right. watch a rod. I mean, I, I miss fishing some of the ways we used to fish, doing so much like so fun today to go out there and turn the grab. You know, I saw some birds today. I saw snakes. I saw turtles and all the stuff I don't see anymore because I'm staring at a dead gum screen all the time. You know, <laughs> yeah. and and to go catch fish like we used to do old school. You know, it it's so much fun doing that. I mean, it's oh, almost yeah. more more rewarding to do it that way now after you stare at a screen all the time. Hey, it's a lot more relaxing. You know, that's why I love to bank fish. Is because when I'm not when I don't have that live scope on and we are genuinely just sitting there fishing. Oh my gosh, it doesn't get any better. No. It doesn't get no better. It's nice to just finally take a break sometimes and fish different. So Levon, do you fish it anymore? That lake? I fished it a couple times last year. Yeah, it's a it really still, good. Look. It's a good lake. Good. good. Got a lot Hard of water. fish in it. Yeah, it's you know it's a Levon's a real good crappie lake. It's yeah got a lot of Miss timber in it, brush piles, everything. Mr. Case says, Brad, head over here to Grand Lake and give us a schooling on pulling those jigs. Uh, I, I believe we're you. going, we're, me and Case are going to be going fishing here soon. But he said, uh, hey, he said, Brad said that he could come put the whooping on them when they're out here suspended like that. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you could too, Brad. Uh, yesterday, and them things three, four foot away were running up there and smoking it. All I did was <laughs> think about you. They were lined up thick too. I thought, man, Brad would come through here and put I it on them. <laughs> usually when i get to go to oklahoma it's really hot or really oh, cold miserable <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean it's usually either really really hot or really cold yeah. uh i would love to come out there and fish you know Oklahoma. Man, doing, uh, doing the Jerry, one, one of these days old ken he said he's going to set up a, a fishing camp on grand at his lake house uh, oh really yeah maybe in august or something but i remember he we're going to go not ripping august. sometime not uh, august. yeah I yeah know. it's back and cool <laughs> yeah hey, I fished, uh, it's probably 20 something years ago now. I think it was North American crappie back in the day. Brad might remember them, that trail, uh, had a tournament on grand and I went up there. I went way up North three fingers or something. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Is there still a cove? Oh, up there? Okay. My gosh, buddy. Yeah. That's hey, that you're smoking I, them right now. Then. A sm spider rigging in there, and we killed them, and actually really? qualified for a classic. And then we went and fished one one time, and tell on Todd. Me and Paul went and fished, and we stayed at that is crazy. Red 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 Lantern or something. Red Eleven. Red Eleven. We stayed yep. in room. Todd said, "Hey, you'll split a cabin." So, dude, that is been, insane. You know, Red Eleven's been it's been dozed, it, and everybody tells me really. That. Yeah, it used to be a nice place and a big oh, old man. shindig. Dude. It was. We stayed yeah. there and fished this tournament, and. Me and Paul, there was a, I don't know if it was in Horse Creek or somewhere up there, and, and there was a like a, a old derrick or something out in the middle of the lake out there yeah, somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, That's we pulled up and had some brush floated against it, and we uh, caught some good fish. And uh, anyway, we told Todd and said Todd found it too, mm -hmm. and we're like, hey, you know, stay off that, stay off that derrick, you know. And he's like, I'll give y'all on ten o'clock. After 10, I can fish it. And we're like, okay, fair. Well, we were in another spot, and we were catching some fish, and I kept looking over, and I said, we need to hurry up and go fish that. We need to hurry, go fish it. Well, we, you know, you don't want to leave fish to go try to find oh, fish. Oh, yeah, exactly. Next thing you know, I see Todd pull up on it, and that little sucker won that tournament <laughs> off of that dare. Oh, my so gosh, was, that's freaking funny. Yeah, he beat us. I think we came in second or third but he ended up beating us off that wow day. man yeah. so you've fished grand lake before that's crazy i, I fished uh probably two or three tournaments on it wow yeah. you know I what's can't... crazy is it don't have any more tournaments at all on it it's, it's I wild know. yeah and, it, and it, it fishes better now than it ever has by far i know paul went way up that river he's the one that told me about that three fingers and he caught yeah, that... a two, he caught a 285 black oh, crappie man. up there in a the tournament they won a tournament up there well, you're probably talking closer to 30 years ago now, you know. Holy and, you know, smokes. He's got wow. that fish on his wall. They, if you, you know, the biggest fish of the tournament yep. or something got a free mount. And, uh, yeah, 285 he caught in Grand Lake. You ain't going to believe this, dude. So my wife won that big fish tournament inside <laughs> inside Three Fingers where you're talking about. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Same That's, exact area. I remember running up that river in the fog and I was in uh, – I had this is way I think uh, you know GPS had just came out maybe yeah anyway I'm running up there in a one of them stinking paddlefish jumps up <laughs> hits my trolling motor cuts it in half it 
bounce, half of it bounces off the windshield, half of it off my partner. We've got blood and guts all the way from the front of the boat to the back. <laughs> Holy smokes, man. And we stop out there in the middle of the lake, you know, and I'm like, what did we just yeah. hit? Like, Holy you couldn't crap. see it. it. was dark, you know. And Oh, man, you thought you killed somebody. <laughs> I didn't know what we ran over. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, I've got a question of, here that I want to get to. Midwest yeah, Outlaw, he said, where would you guys start in a flooded lake Water temperature here is 53 degrees. Wow. I'd say that's definitely a probably a pre pre spawn pattern almost. Yeah. And those fish are going to start pulling up. Yeah. Where that water goes, they're going to keep going further up the, the, the right. creek or the bank or wherever they were before. They're going to keep following it up some. Shallow so enough. You can check there. But also, I've seen through the years that, especially on a river lake, I'd go back to exactly where I was catching them. And they would be pretty much in the same depth. Now it might went from there were ten feet when before the rise, it rose fifteen feet. I remember a, a, a lake on the Mississippi that I fished years ago, and it jumped fifteen foot up. We were catching them at twenty five foot deep. Then they pretty much didn't leave that particular water column we we're in. They just seemed deeper, but they were actually in the same <laughs> before. So it's all about eliminating, man. Keep mm. eliminating fish where you were before and then move shallower up in the water would be my advice on that one exactly i agree this time of year though it's hard for me to want to go fish 53 degree water when you can find warmer somewhere mm -hmm. <laughs> so load that boat up and go to a different lake what i'm trying to say <laughs> I'm, <just kidding. laughs> right. I'm going to go through here to make sure I, like i said guys let's see some fish reports and uh all right no questions so uh lake fork has to be one of the top talked about when people wanting to go fish the lakes jerry is one of the top men on the lake jerry what's your number if somebody wants to go fishing with you on there uh 214-544-3678 and there you, you can find go. me on facebook i don't have what's, a website is it is it jerry hancock fishing yes sir. okay yep. there you guys go that's that's your uh uh russell that's your guy to trip on lake fork right there he's the man like Homer said, he said, remind you guys on YouTube, click the thumbs up, subscribe button, turn the bell notification on twice for all the updates that we give. Got a new podcast dropping out tomorrow, and we're talking about shallow fish. It's going to be waiting for a crappie. We got Mr. John Mayo. He's usually on here every week. Also, the infamous John Harrison over here in Grenada Lake. Uh, anybody knows crappie fishing? And Mr. John Harrison, he's, uh, he's, he's been, a legend Jerry, I've been, as well. That'd be a good I've, also been, I've also been excited to ask you this, Jerry. Did I see yeah. your right video that Lake Fork has alligators, or am I tripping? Oh, yeah, it does. Yep. It has gators. Yeah, there's one. Really? I can take you literally a uh, quarter mile from where I'm sitting right now on a little bridge and probably there's, show you five or six right now. Dude, uh, I think it was Travis Decker showed a video yeah. of the alligator. I thought he was being <laughs> smart aleck, and he was like in no. Florida or something. And I'm like, yeah, there ain't no way Lake Fork has alligators. Yeah, really? that's little that's little caney little caney creek where he took that video. Got you, you. man. That was the, beautiful. Yeah, there's a. I don't see them like Very where awesome. I fish most time because I'm out on the main lake. There, I've the never creek. seen them there. So, yeah, I thought I'd see one today. There's where I went. I didn't see one, but I know there's some around there. Yeah. But yeah, there's a there's quite a few in Fork. It's That's great. Uh, I yeah. would have never guessed. Yeah, Brad's probably like, yeah, whatever. They're all over the rest. Yeah, yeah, they're everywhere. Down Dude, there. We don't. I don't. You know, I freaked out at Brad. Uh, I'm pretty sure we saw a Gator a long ways away on his lake. He was telling me it was. I'm like, dude, no way. That's a freaking alligator. <laughs> it's just yeah. different when you yeah, hear me. But then, yeah. but then they were saying it's Fork. I'm like. I fished that lake twice, never seen him. I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. They were yeah. up on you me. just didn't go the ride. It next time you come down, I'll take you. Yeah. Please. Oh man, that's crazy. That's nuts. I mean, I don't worry about gators for sure. I mean, that's nah, dude, the same all the time. time. But you're more likely to know they were out there. They that's only true. eat skiers and and you know tubers and skiers. All they eat. Yeah. <laughs> they got a mustache on, so I'm not worried about it. Oh man, <laughs> hey, do do people ski and tube on that lake? <laughs> not the smart ones. Yeah, <laughs> too many trees. Yeah, too many true. Fork, true. Yeah, that's not much of a recreation lake. Not and a big that's what I love about it. It's yeah. not Grand Lake, I guarantee you. you oh know. man, heck no, heck no. Yeah, you can fish Fourth uh, of July, Memorial Day, whatever. What? Out here, have no problem at all. Holy smokes! Yeah, that's impossible on Grand unless you're yeah. done by like 
8 a.m. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got Greg Gordon. He gave a uh, a long line and trip over on Percy Priest, fishing two one sixteenth ounce jigs in twelve to sixteen foot of water. A good mix of white and black crappie. Every fish we playing was a female and still full of eggs. Water temp was fifty nine to sixty one. Boy, that spawn's coming. I bet. Hey, uh, John Gathright said he can show me some. He's on Millwood, and he ain't oh, yeah. mine. There's a bunch on Millwood too. Oh yeah. yeah. That's for sure. Man, yeah, that's crazy. You guys fishing with that's why them crappie are so big. They gotta freaking run away from gators all the time and fight <laughs> them off. They're hand to hand combating with them gators. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's why. nothing to worry about. <laughs> Man. That's crazy. Okay, uh, James, he's caught fish Saturday, blackfish limit in eight foot of water flats. Fish were scattered, egg sacs were half empty, so it's happening for them. White and chartreuse large profiles were their favorite. I bet a slab hunter would have smoked them, man. Oh, man. I thought the same exact thing when you said that. A slab hunter is working great right now as well. Can't leave that out, and I dang sure can't leave the swimming minnow out because that's going to be an, another bait I'm going to use tomorrow. But they're all in the boat still. And that bluegrass is killer. Remember, if you order from LureNet.com, any kind of Bobby Garland product, use the discount code PropConnection15. Get you 15% 15, 15 off your order. So make sure you take advantage of that deal. Save a little bit of change or more baits. If you guys are fishing the bank around me, get live minnow bluegrass and thank me later. I'll take a hug later when you see me. You'll take a hug later. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Swimming Marky minnow. Lake. Fish are two foot off the bottom. Females are close to... Close by, haven't caught a spawned out female until yesterday. Been a tough bite, uh -oh. having to hold the bait right on them. Man, I think that's kind of been like Barnett for me. You know, yeah. you've been having to hold baits pretty much in front of these fish for the last six months, seems like. Yeah. Man, that's crazy. Come on yeah, down. Charles Henderson said he's going to have a good report next week because he's going with you Friday. Yep. Miss Charles is going out fishing with me Friday. Marcus, he's fishing Highway 43 on the ridge, uh, on the res, he said, at nighttime, and it's loaded. Oh, what happened to Jerry? Oh, we'll see you later, Jerry. Hey, next time, give us a little warning before you. There he is. <laughs> Sorry, somebody called about a trip. I'm sure I was trying to. Uh -huh. Look, I didn't, you know what it was? Is you gave your number on here, and they, yeah. they already started calling you. <laughs> yeah. Also, another thing, any of the guys from Magnolia Crappie Club or even Crappie Masters might remember Bo Hudson. He used to fish tournaments with me. We fished tournaments for years together, had a lot of great success. But I uh, got news a minute ago, right before the show, that he passed away yesterday. So any of you guys from Magnolia Crappie Club, I know you remember Bo and I fishing together, even Crappie Masters guys. Say a little prayer for him and his family tonight. Uh, but he's joined the good Lord. Yeah, for sure. That's awful, man. Uh, yeah. Brad been putting on the good game face. He learned that right before this live. I did. <laughs> yeah. Jerry, Stop. what is your favorite colors to fish? I got James asking on YouTube here. <coughs> Depends on the, the water clarity somewhat. But, uh, like, I've been doing really good on the purple uh, chartreuse, June bug chartreuse. Mm -hmm. uh, Another little jig I'm using is um, uh, uh, Thermocline Lures. Got a little uh, tadpole. And oh, uh, yeah. a black no, emerald no. is the color that I've been doing really good. So it's kind of a black with a gray bottom. Some it's metal flow. Beaver, beaver tail type deal, little. Yeah. Little one. Yeah. I uh, remember that. That. And uh, if I could only have one jig to fish every day, any lake, no matter where I went, uh -oh. I'll take a blue gray hair jig. The the premier hair jig that i that i pushed from uh david pauling has been tying uh gotcha. that jig is kind of my that's my minna when they don't bite anything i tell my customers <laughs> all right i'm gonna tie this on if they don't bite this we're, we're done they're not gonna bite anything <laughs> that Man. jig has probably won i can tell you this at one crappie fest first and third this year it won first last year kale probably <laughs> won i don't know how many tens of thousands off of it last year um, wow that jig's just a 
you know, it's it's kind of that 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 uh, gray ghost type uh, yeah. energy, you know, a natural color. Um, it works. What when size head is it? How heavy? You know, I use them anywhere from sixteenth to a quarter ounce. Um, yeah. But um, most, I, I would say, I I typically go eighth ounce most of the time with what I'm doing. I, wow, I'm really? More confidence in eighth ounce. I will drop down to a sixteenth if the bite gets really small, you know, really tough. But uh, most of the time I'm using an eighth ounce in it. But I use a number four hook, so it kind of keeps that profile short still. Yeah. And I don't use painted heads. Uh, I just use a, you know, just a lead head. Normal lead so, head. Um, I like the eighth ounce, and I, I'm finding myself going more sixteenth. <laughs> you know, Kale's pushing me to some thirty seconds and sixty four. Yeah. That's, um, that's me. I'm liking that small stuff. You, you're and, throwing me and, an eighth. An eighth. Mm-hmm. They got to be. I'm in Grenada <laughs> using an eighth. <laughs> I've got some that are. I got some half ounce hair jigs. Oh my I use them there, catch them on. Yeah. But wow. okay, three yeah. comments in a row. The, first of all, they're wanting to see the jig, but I'm sure we can't see the jig. But uh, where can I've they got get one? If you if you want me to grab it real quick, take well, where it. where can it's, they get it too? It's uh on. You go to Facebook and look up Premier uh crappie jigs there you guys go for mere it's called a blue gray and i had uh, i had david pauling tie that jig up we worked on it and it's just kind of a it's blue it's got some blue some white some silver and gray in it wow man you guys are getting the sauce from jerry tonight let me grab let me grab one right quick wow he's gonna show y'all the juice (laughs) hey that takes a lot of that takes a lot of man right there (laughs) <laughs> I've got a safety report from Grenada Lake. The spillway area has been temporarily blocked off after w- last week's flooding. He said the Corps was having to remove fallen trees and debris and mm-hmm. everything else. So it's just a little thing about Grenada Lake and the spillway mm-hmm. area. So it's kind of temporary closed off for you guys. Thanks, Hummer, for uh, posting that. He's going to find that booger. I see him. Here he comes. Don't fall, Jerry. <laughs> uh, Bobby's asking how far along is the spawn at the res you know Bobby for me I think the black crappie is pretty much through spawning I think we still got a ways to go as far as white crappie so I would say if I had to say a, just a spit out the percentage I would say about 40% away that is nowhere near what I thought was going to be there you're that's, kidding that is, that, that's, that's a quarter ounce Gotcha. And uh, that is ain't it? <laughs> that's a hammer. This, thing, this, that is. This, yeah. this is this is eighth ounce. Hey, he says if they don't bite, he just knocks them out with it. <laughs> yeah, but you can look. I'm. This is my jig box for my hair jig box. If you can see, I've got yeah. three colors total, <laughs> and two of them I don't use. But uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, funny. Yeah. So man, there, okay. Got but you. even with that quarter ounce, it's it's not a big profile. There it, 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 re- you know? it reminds me of a reminds me of a blue ice almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's got this I'm fuzzy gonna... Palmer chenille, and when you when it gets wet, it lays back, and this thing looks so much like a a minnow or a shad in the water. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's <laughs> it's been a, and then I another one I've been like I was telling you earlier this uh, pork purple chartreuse. Oh yeah, you know I like we that, call yeah. that the Fort Flash, which is you know down here everybody wants to call it LSU, which I don't care for LSU. So I, <laughs> I hear but, you. You know that's another David Pauling hair jig. You know, gotcha. and, well, this I is, guarantee you, if Ken's watching this, he's going to go buy every jig that guy can ever tie for the rest of his life. <laughs> yeah, I mean he ties. He'll tie a color. That's a that's one Kale had tie, had him tie up for him. That's some gotcha. kind of bluegill looking. Kel mm-hmm. wanted something that was different, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Kel's that gonna jig kill right us. there, <coughs> that jig right there works when nothing else will for me, especially here on Fort. That's amazing. Just, uh, that's kind of my minna. Yep. There we Who go. What is your favorite time of year to fish for? Uh, I get to ask this every day. I would <laughs> probably say I would probably say November. Oh, if wow. you just what? for quality. That's and in numbers, I'd say November's hard to beat. Wow. Um, May can be 
really, really good, that post-spawn bite. You know, fish are a little bit skinnier then coming off, you know, but they're real aggressive. Mm -hmm. And you're still what we call pole deep. You're catching them 8 to 12 foot deep. But November is probably, man, for quality. It's but yeah, they're, they're deep, aren't they? They get deep then. Well, they're, 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 they're in that you're going to catch fish anywhere from 12 to 20 foot deep. Oh, okay. Which I don't consider that deep. I mean, you got to mm -hmm. remember when it gets winter time, we're catching fish thirty, thirty-five foot deep a lot of times. Mm -hmm. You know. Oh yeah. But, but they're real aggressive, them. and and <clears throat> November's usually cool. Uh, we're not the weather's nice, you know. And but fork, I tell people, forks a twelve month a year lake. November. It all depends on the wind. You know, it's it's all about the wind. Yep. I'll go back and this kind of subject line kind of started up with that question, but Dustin, what's your favorite month to crappie fish if you had to pick one? Man, I would have a hard time ever knowing if November was good enough if you can't tell by these deer because I'm always chasing them boogers. But uh, my favorite month to fish it, at Grand Lake is hard to beat September. I think September is my mm. favorite, uh, favorite month. It's all the way through September, I can get the biggest numbers, and they're shallower. So I love September. Oh, that's wow. probably mine. Yep. I'm two total two total opposites, but yeah. yeah. Late you know, late after go ahead. Now, now I know yours are gonna be June or July. It's gonna be June, <laughs> man. Yep. June is right there for me, my favorite month of the wind to say, settle yeah. down, yeah. stable pattern, fish are hungry, the the shad haven't blossomed as much as they will later in the summertime. Uh, so, man, I'm going to say June flat out for me. Yes. You know, I, honestly, from March all the way until September, I'm having a great time and catching them. It's hard to pick one month, but, man, September is really good. And May, May can be really good. It's hard. It's hard for me to pick a month. It's always year depending because sometimes I'll have a month that's just like, holy smokes, we cracked them. And then next year I don't. <laughs> So it's just different. All right, let's say on the opposite side of things, what would be your least favorite month? To oh gosh, o October hands down. September's my favorite. October's my worst. Oh man, October's killer down here too. See, that's hilarious. October is the worst month for me here, hundred percent. October, November, December. My I'd, have to, say, I'd yeah. have to say probably January. Yeah, I'm right there with I'm Jerry, and my number one reason why I would be in January is just because that's it's the coldest time of year for us. Yep. Um, the water is just really at that point and getting cold. December is not quite there, but you get in January, the water is actually cold. Um, fish are real lethargic. They're not wanting to move too much. They're sitting still. But if I had to pick one, probably my least favorite month, it would probably be January. But on the same side of that token, you can catch some of the biggest fish. Big in the ones, yeah, yeah, you are right. You might you might catch a few. <laughs> My crazy big. Yeah, I can see that. Guys, another thing I want to uh, kind of bring up on this week's show as well, and I got to ask this question last weekend, and um, what would be a couple products that you'd want to have in your boat at all times? And and this this is very important. And if you don't have one, I would definitely suggest looking for one and make sure you have it in your boat. And it's, it's simple, but you can look on Amazon or wherever you get stuff from, but get you a really good first aid kit. You know, that's one thing that I, I got. We got a lot of new people coming in the sport of fishing in general right now, or even boating. Get you a good quality safety kit to put in your boat. Keep it at all times. Let everybody know in the boat where it's at. But if you got a uh, getting into the sport of crappie fishing, boat riding or anything on the water make sure you get a good safety kit they're going to cost you about 20 30 bucks but make sure you got one in your boat at all times guys that's a great tip right there i actually learned that the hard way one time with a client uh he actually fell this was when i just started out he fell and hit his elbow on a cleat of the boat mm -hmm. bus busted it wide <laughs> open bleeding everywhere and i had nothing yeah. So, yeah, learned my lesson there. That's a good tip, though. A little, little well, tidbit. Even last year, last spring, I had a, a gentleman waving <laughs> down in the boat by me, and I didn't I didn't know what was going on, really. He was just waving me down, like, come help. And I get over there, and he's like, man, you got a safety kit. I got stuck in my leg by, I think it was a catfish. 
Oh stuck yeah. In my leg and he was bleeding. I wouldn't say like gushing out everywhere, but he was bleeding pretty good that he needed something to wrap it up with. So he my God. Yeah. But I, I, like I said, I got that question asked last weekend and I'm always thinking about, you know, what some of the knowledge that we've got as far as the crappie connection and today's bike that we can share to you guys that, that can possibly help you out in the future. So if you don't have a good quality safety kit in your boat, and I'm not talking about a little bitty one, get one that you have goggles and everything that you might need while you're on the water. Another thing that I would suggest is go out and learn uh, a safety course, especially, you know, if you're different, taking a lot of different people out, regardless if you're a guide or just like taking people in the water, you just never know when you might need to jump in a situation and help somebody out. So CPR as well, um, which hopefully I'll never have to use CPR or anybody. Well, I was going to say, quit but, mentioning all this stuff. Bro. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's one of those things that you, it needs to be mentioned, and I want people to realize if you don't have a good safety kit, get one in your boat. Yeah, fair enough. But, you know, it's been a great show. Appreciate you guys going joining in. Jerry, I'm going to look back. Um, I know, I'm trying to think – I think we covered the Jerry questions, but we'll see. I got Jerry. He's got a podcast coming out with us, him and Travis Decker, the 22nd of May. And it's going to be, we talked about breaking down new bodies of water. So you, if you have not hit subscribe yet, that podcast with Jerry, Travis Decker is going to be coming out, like I said, May 22nd, when I've got that podcast listed to come out. So if you got any questions about crappie fishing, I can promise you I've got some podcasts coming that's covering everything. This has probably been the most variation of podcasts that I have covered since the beginning this year. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn your notifications on, hit that bell twice for us. And if you haven't done it yet, I think we've got 211 likes on this live stream. Go ahead and hit that for me real quick. I think it's 211. Let's close the show with about 220. I know we can do that real quick if you haven't done it yet. But I definitely appreciate everybody joining us every week. Absolutely. Without Bobby Garland Bates, Dustin and I wouldn't get to sit here and talk to guys like Jerry and get out and do these podcasts and different things. So definitely special thanks to Bobby Garland Bates for allowing us and choosing us to do this for you guys. Make sure you take kids fishing. Take new people fishing. If you got the opportunity Show them how great and how much we love the sport by taking somebody Appreciate out. It. And Jerry, thank you so much, buddy. It's always a pleasure. I, I thank you guys for allowing me to come on and talk with you guys. I always yep. enjoy it. And oh yeah. Look this forward definitely to won't it. be the last time, Lord willing. Yep. <laughs> That's right. Look forward to it. Yep. You like I said, Jerry, that podcast breaking down new bodies of water will be out <laughs> May twenty second. <22nd. laughs> Jerry's got a lot to say in that podcast, and uh, definitely appreciate it. He's been coming on Crawford Connection, man, I guess since the beginning, really, haven't you, Jerry? Yeah, been a while. I think first one, I Oklahoma, can't remember. Oklahoma City? <laughs> yeah, hey, you Oklahoma guys, City, you guys I are think. Getting, you guys yep. are getting old on me. You guys are getting are. old on me. Yeah. <laughs> we start talking about years instead of months. Yeah, you know, yeah. Right. And stuff. <laughs> also, uh, another piece of news, uh, Hunter, my son, Hunter Chapel. Their baby should be coming into the world probably Sunday. So, oh, congratulations man. to him's coming up. We got uh, little Willie's going to be involved, and he's going to be our newest member of Crop Connection. Hopefully, this coming Sunday. That'll awesome. be awesome. Sweet. So, looking forward to being grandpa twice over. It's oh yeah. <laughs> it's 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 not a well paying job, but it is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not, but I can tell you it is a uh, fun job as well. You bet. So we'll you I'll let you guys know how Tuesday. everything comes with that next week. And uh, we'll be back here next Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. Appreciate everybody <laughs> for joining in. And my, like I said, invite somebody to the sport of crappie fishing. Got some new things up my sleeve. I haven't even discussed the Dustin yet. Whoa. I've got something new Hello. coming out that Dustin doesn't even know about. Nobody knows about it. It's in the beginning of the stages. Kind of working with those guys with crappie forever. It's pretty exciting, I can tell you that. Uh, I'm very, I'll know here in very just a minute. <laughs> excited to tell you guys more about this new thing I got coming out this summer. 
Till next week, got Brad Chapel here. Dustache, holla. Jerry, Jerry Hancock. See you guys. Enjoyed it. <laughs>